Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're enjoying nostalgia. Now, I want to make a very clear distinction between enjoying nostalgia and being stuck in nostalgia because one is good, one is bad, right? Like there, there are positives and negatives to nostalgia, which I'll talk about, but I just kind of feel like enjoying it makes it a lot more present in the moment. You're enjoying it today because it has you have good memories of it, you enjoy it, as opposed to being stuck in it, which is like you wish you could go back and relive it. And it's like, that's not how I feel at all. And I kind of felt like, because I was researching nostalgia before uh, I made this podcast, because I was like, I don't really feel like I want to go back. Like, whether I feel like I want to go back or not, it's like, I can't go back at all. So it's not like, it's not like a choice, right? I, I can't go back and relive childhood memories or moments or certain experiences that I had, right? So it's kind of, it, it makes no sense to be like, well, I want to go back and relive those moments. It's like, no, why would I, I can, I could just have fun now and I can have better experiences today or tomorrow or the, you know what I mean? So it's like stuck on right now, today, in this moment, when can I, what can I truly enjoy? Um, but all that to, to kind of say that it, it feels like I'm enjoying nostalgia in the sense of like the media I consume or the, the content that I'm, I'm watching mostly. So it's like movies, TV shows, right? And I used to watch this documentary that was on Netflix that they took down. Well, it's not so much that they took down, but it's more of like the owner. Okay, the person who made the documentary, right? They own that documentary. And I guess they made a deal with Netflix and were like, we're going to keep this up there for however many number of years. And then after that contract is over, we're going to take it down and we're going to put it on our own website that people can um, purchase monthly to watch. And that sucks. That sucks because now I can't, you know, I'm already paying for Netflix uh, or the, the Netflix subscription, but now I can't watch this. And it's not that the document, the documentary is particularly nostalgic. Well, I guess it is. Well, I didn't really watch it until 2021. I don't know how long the documentary was up there for, but I didn't really start watching it until late 2021, 2022, you know what I mean? And then unfortunately it got taken down by like 2023 which was very disappointing but all that to say is that like and there have been other documentaries that are cool but they don't reflect that one but all in all i'm saying all that because like now i'm re-watching like my old childhood shows and movies and it's nice to like still enjoy those today right like um and I'm sure kids today enjoy the movies that they're watching now, but they're, for me, I just feel like my childhood, the the ideas that were coming out during that time, I feel like were so much more, uh, they were just better, I feel. But, and particularly the TV shows, so right now, re-watching um, Avatar, The Last Airbender, that's that's nostalgic, right? Like, I remember growing up watching that show. I remember the first time I saw certain episodes. I remember the feeling of, like, this whole world and being, like, closed up into it, you know what I mean? And watching it now, it makes me think back on it. I'm like, man, that was such a good time, and I'm glad I watched it as a kid as opposed to, like, waiting so long as until now, you know what I'm saying? But then... uh I'm not, I'm not kind of like, man, I wish I could go back. I'm kind of like, man, this is still relevant today. It still matters today. And it's still like impactful. It still has good themes, characters, moments that like really stick with you throughout, throughout time. And it's one of the reasons why it's one of the best, one of the greatest TV shows ever made. Um, and, I. Uh, I also watch uh, SpongeBob, like season one, SpongeBob, hilarious season one, SpongeBob, 10 out of 10. I mean, you can't, you can't beat that. Like the first three seasons, they're, they're unbeatable. They're unmatched and, and amazing, and amazing stuff. Um, and they still continue with SpongeBob. It's not like it's a done series, but it's more of like looking back on it. It's like, man, what a time, what a, what a great moment, you know? Um, but again, it doesn't make me want to go. Well, if anything, it makes me, it makes me want the writers 
to capture that magic again, you know, but it's hard to capture lightning in a bottle twice, right? Like they, they have it in the bottle, right? It's still in there. They're still using it, but it's just kind of like a diluted down version. The lightning isn't as, uh, as bright as it, as it was at the beginning, you know, but Hey, I get it. They're doing the thing, whatever. And then other TV shows like Cartoon Network shows or, well, those are two were Nickelodeon. Um, um, these are like uh, Cartoon Network shows like uh, Samurai Jack, Ben 10, Powerpuff Girls. I mean, all kinds of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Yeah, that's, that was a good one. I'm surprised that that show doesn't like they've continued Powerpuff Girls. They've done like different iterations of Ben 10. Um, they, they've done any number of other, you know, Cartoon Network has like tried to like reboot or redo certain shows, but I'm surprised Foster's Home hasn't gone that that treatment because it's just like there's endless possibilities with Imaginary Friends with endless uh, amounts of characters. You know, I just it's weird to think that like they're not what's it called? They're not trying to do something new with it. Oh, or maybe they are. I don't know, but whatever. And I also um feel this way with Pixar movies so I feel like the newer Pixar movies like today's Pixar movies they're not really hitting the same as they used to before and I'm okay with that you know because they they made incredible works uh, incredible movies when when I was growing up and re-watching them they're just they're just classics right they're just fantastic they're they're amazing movies they're really heartwarming and amazing especially for I guess the time that they were made eh, it's not really that crazy but it's just kind of like it's cool you know and re-watching it it makes me think of the time fondly but it does not again I'm enjoying it today because it still still matters to me it's still still amazing as opposed to I guess somebody older well I guess everybody well let me say this again Somebody who was like older probably can't re-experience um, certain things, you know. So I live in a time where it's like, oh, I can in- I can rewatch or enjoy my my favorite TV shows and movies, right? Whereas I guess back in the day it was kind of like, no, this is it. It, it, it releases and and then that's the only time you get to watch it or really experience it. You don't get. You don't get anything else, you know, but that's why it's good to enjoy it. And I'm sure people now are like, oh, this was my favorite show when I was a kid and they can rewatch it and they'd be like, yeah, but looking at it now, it's garbage compared to this newer stuff, you know? So I I think that's kind of the, the feeling now. And then I feel the same way with the, the cartoon Disney movies. So Disney has been making... Less and less 2D animation movies has been, I guess, focusing on 3D animation movies. Is that right? I think I think so. I can't I can't remember the last 2D Disney movie that they made. Yeah, they've been focusing mostly on 3D, but not that it's bad. I, I actually like the 3D movies, like Moana and Tangled. Like those are those are fantastic movies. I really like them. But there's something about like. Uh, Princess and the Frog and Mulan and Aladdin, like those movies, they they hold a, a different level of nostalgia. And it just, it's just so good. It's so perfect. As opposed to like the live action remakes that they're making now. It's kind of like, and eh, people, kids born today who are watching it now are probably going to be like, yeah, that's, that's cool. I'm glad I watched that in theaters or, you know, that was like my first time watching it. But now it's actually like looking back on what was before, what came before it is actually a lot better. And I like that a lot more. So it's just kind of like, that's a weird thing now that we're growing up into is that like people are introduced to something, but then like maybe the older version is a lot better, you know? But anyways, those are those are the kind of like things that I'm watching or like rewatching and seeing again, and it makes me enjoy the time, and that's a part of the positive nostalgia. That's those are positive feelings, you know. 
And it also makes me enjoy now is that like, I can appreciate the movie more now as an adult because when you're a kid, you know, you watch anything, right? And you're just like, oh, that was cool. That was cool. You know what I mean? Like rewatching, um, when is it? You, you, you rewatch, um, like a TV show, right? And you're like, uh, you're like, I used to watch this every time when it came on TV as a kid. I used to watch it and I loved every single part of it. It was absolutely 100% the best out there. You know, I used to watch it week after week after week and then I have to wait for the next season and then so on and so forth, right? But then you watch it today and you're just kind of like, what was I? It's annoying. It, the plot doesn't work. They're doing random stuff in there. It's just like, you're kind of, you missed out on a lot. Or maybe you didn't understand it. You were just like, Batman, punch, or, you know, I just want to see Batman fight the bad guys. I don't, I don't want to think about like the inner turmoil of being, uh, being Batman at night and Bruce Wayne during the day and which one is really him. Like, you're not thinking about that stuff as a kid. You're just like, punch him, punch him. You know, I want him to fight Mr. Freeze. I want him to beat up Penguin. I want him to to hurt the Joker. You know what I mean? You just you just want to see the action. You know, you don't know the, the messaging or the themes or the story behind it all. You're just kind of there to like enjoy it. But now, because you're older, you're smarter, hopefully, and and you know what's going on. You can follow the the plot line thread a lot better. Now you're able to see more, uh, more behind it. You're able to appreciate it a lot more. And that's how I feel rewatching like behind the scenes footage. So they'll upload like behind the scenes footage of like movies on like uh, on YouTube or on Twitter or whatever. And they'll also be like in the DVD. Uh, disc that I, I bought them in but I don't really watch them on the DVD disc anymore so it's like eh. but anyways re-watching it and seeing how the animators would like create the 3D model and then like how they would figure out how to get it to move and then adding in the like because I, I saw that they did this with Monsters Inc. I'm talking about Monsters Inc. here where I, I saw behind the scenes footage which, which was like we had to like really work on the hair of Sully to make it look as realistic as possible. And they had to like spend hours of time like getting it to look good. And that's the kind of stuff that I enjoy seeing now. A lot is just that like, oh snap, like they were really working. They were really doing their thing. They were, they were so focused and, and putting in that work to make it what it is now. And I, I find that interesting i find it interesting that like this is what it takes to make it make this story and every other kind of thing you know uh as well as the live action live action movies um when you see actors training or getting ready to uh getting in shape for a movie or doing fight coordination uh working with the stunt team like stuff like that i think is cool i think it's it's really nice to like see it and then understand it. So I uh, I would watch um fight scenes and then I'd be like, "Oh snap, like as a kid, I obviously wouldn't notice that they sub substituted a stunt double in there or like that they cut away so that way it could cut back to this or like that's a whole new shot that they probably edited and cut to make it look like it was the same day but it's not." So little moments like that that I I see now and I guess maybe for some people, it kind of takes away some of the magic, right? Is that like, oh, they didn't actually fight. They just had a stunt double come in and do it for them. But for me, it's just kind of like, it it takes those things, you know? It takes those things to make the movie happen or to make it, you know, somewhat fun or realistic, right? Because like, I remember I was watching the, the Hitman's Bodyguard with Samuel L. Jackson and Ryan Reynolds. And Samuel L. Jackson's doing all these jumps and crazy stunts and stuff. And it's like... I know that's not him in his old age, like jumping and killing and fighting, like all, at least not all of it. Some of it, maybe not all of it. I'll see it. And then I'll be like, I know for a fact that's not him. But then I'm like, but does that take away 
the action or the stunt team's work or like his stunt double or any of that stuff. I was like, no, I, I still enjoy it. I still think that was a cool shot. I still think that was a cool move or, you know, a cool kill or whatever. Like none of that bothers me. And positive nostalgia kind of seeing these people work on these types of movies or TV shows or, or video games as well. It, it, it sparks creativity in me because it's kind of like watching them work hard for that. It's kind of like I can do the exact same thing. And I, I think that if I put that same level of dedication in my work, I can definitely um, be great, you know, and create something uh, create something so good that people are going to be like, you have to watch this or this is a classic or, you know, it's, it's a real, real cinema or real, uh, amazing piece of work here, you know? And it gets me excited thinking about like, cause they don't really go back. They don't, they may move forward, but they never go back. Like, Toy Story, Toy Story is done. Now, they may come out with Toy Story 5, right? But the first Toy Story, that's that's the baseline. That's Pixar's first movie out there. That's that's the start, right? They're not going to go back and reanimate Toy Story. I mean, they definitely could. That's that's no, you know, that's not outside of the realm of possibility, but it's more of like that first Toy Story is there no matter what. And it excites me because it, it, it makes me think that like, as long as you make good work, it doesn't matter how the animation looks, right? Like the animation between that one and the recent Toy Story movie is like, you can see a clear difference, right? There's a clear distinction between their first movie and their latest one. But at the same time, you're kind of like, but the story is so good in the first one that no matter the animation, I still think this one's better. It's the first one that kicked it off. I'm still into the story so much. And the characters look good as well. It's not like the animation's terrible. But it's like, that was the first thing. So it's just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of just saying that like, it excites me because as long as it's good, it doesn't matter little details can be updated or changed in the future and progressed further to improve your game but you're still going to be a classic it's like a like a classic car right like the difference between a classic old car and the newest cars now is that like okay the newest car can go go faster and it could probably hold up a lot better than the old car right and like in a race or whatever but the car can, the old car can still get you from point A to point B, can still drive on the road. It can still, it still looks good. Like you clean it up, make it look nice, give it a paint job. Like what's, what's really the, the bad thing there? There's not, right? And it's exciting. It just, all of that to just really say that the positive nostalgia is opening my mind to the good memories and making me feel like, I'm still attached to it. You know, it's still a part of me. It's still with me today. And that makes me feel good. And that's cool. And it makes me appreciate today, uh, grad grateful and have great gratitude for my life right now. You know, it's because of that movie. I am who I am now, where it sparks imagination and wonder into my mind that makes me hopeful and optimistic and fun and you know, good, you know, those, those kinds of things, um, stick with me. But at the same time, there could be negative nostalgia attached to it. So maybe that movie was kind of, um, whatchamacallit, maybe that movie has a, has a, a negative feeling attached to you or certain experiences maybe, right? And it can leave you stuck in the past. So, or maybe, maybe, here's another thing. It's a good feeling, good memories, but because like, okay, I'm going to talk to the, I'm going to talk to the, talk to everybody here. So let's say you had a past relationship, right? And it was a good relationship. You know, you guys dated, it was fun, right? But then 
uh-oh, all of a sudden, it ends, and heartbreak is completely destroyed, the relationship is over, it's just kind of like, darn it, this sucks, right? Now, you guys used to watch this movie together, and now you're just kind of like, well, dang it, now I don't like this movie because it makes me think of this person, and now it makes me kind of like want to talk to them again, or go back, or like try to relive that moment or whatnot because I'm single and I'm lonely and I don't have anybody else. And even if I did, if I watched this movie with them, I wouldn't like it and it just yada, 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 right? All, all comes looping around. And it leaves you stuck in the past and it also makes you think of like, if the good memories hit, then it makes you think of the bad memories, which is the day you guys broke up. So it's like, those were good times, but it did end in heartbreak. They did do this thing to me. They did end the relationship or I did because they did this or whatever, right? And it leaves you stuck in the past. It leaves you stuck there to like longing for it or wanting it back when it's like you can't go back. You can't get those years or months of the relationship that you spent devoted to this person or committed to this person. You can't get that back. But what you can do is appreciate today. You're in a whole new level, in a whole new place. And rewatching that movie doesn't have to doesn't have to be associated with that person. It could just be something attached to you, you know? It can be just like a good date night movie for any partner that you may have. Or you can try to change it and make it like uh, a family experience or your friends watch it together and stuff like that. It just, I think it just kind of like when you're stuck in nostalgia or when you experience negative nostalgia, it feels like you're not enjoying now. You're not enjoying today. And that's not how I feel. I feel like I'm really enjoying today because of the nostalgia. Because I grew up with this thing, it makes me appreciate now more than ever. And it makes me kind of like carry that positivity with me. But with the negative nostalgia, it can lead to... It makes you kind of go like, man, I wish I could go back and relive that moment or man, I, I want to go back on when I was young and I, I could get like, um, which it, I could go back and relive this experience or do this all over again and try this new thing and do this differently. And it's like, you have time. Don't, don't do that to yourself. You know, longing to return or go back in time is never going to happen. But focus on right now and kind of say to yourself, no, I don't need to do that because I can make new memories. I can do new things. I can be adventurous today. I can be different today. I can live a whole new life and be amazing and wonderful in a whole new way. You know, if you stay stuck back there, it'll, it, it does lead to depression. It keeps your mind from growing and becoming new. And you always want to be new. You never want to be stuck in anything. You never want to live like that. You only want to improve and get better. And improving and getting better means, you know, shedding your skin, right? It, it means in order to grow, you're going to have to let go of some things. You're going to have to, you know, get, get stronger in, in who you are, you know? And the things that you enjoy. So maybe it's like holding on to what is part of you, but then letting go of like all of those things, you know? The sun's going to come up again, so you don't have to worry. You're going to be fine. Another part of nostalgia is music. And it, it, it's just like, this is an example of positive um, nostalgia. Because music, right? Again, the same thing with like movies or, or dates or relationships is like you can associate it with a time or with a moment or when you were feeling really sad and you listened to that song, but then you listen to it now and maybe you laugh about it or maybe you're kind of like, it still hits, but it's a different kind of thing, you know, and it only hits now because it's like you've, you've gone through more heartbreak, you've had another relationship that didn't end well, or you... Um, 
or you listen to a song and it lifts you up, right? It's fun. It's good. And with or without said person or said thing attached to it, it would still make it a fun song or a good moment, you know? So music nostalgia is kind of like re-listening to the old um, 2008 top 100 chart, something like that. You know what I mean? Just listening to the those good old classics and attaching it to today. I saw that the people are having listening parties or like having DJ sets listening to music that we grew up listening to that we were too young to like go to the club and dance w- dance to. You know what I mean? So like we couldn't we couldn't club. Or we well they had like school parties and stuff, but it's not really the same thing, right? We couldn't really dance or we couldn't really like have a good time at a party or at the club listening to you know all of the all of the 2000 2000 classics, right? Like listening to Dynamite by Tayo Cruz, right? You couldn't you couldn't listen to that. You know what I mean? You were just a kid. You weren't going to the clubs. I wasn't playing there, right? But now they they put that song in the in the party, right? So it's just it's really fun. And I also think it's just fun to re-listen to it and it makes me go like, "Man, it still hits today. It still it makes me appreciate now. It's just like it's still it's still fun now." And it also boosts my mood. It also makes me feel better, you know? And also, there's there's video games as well. So the other day, it's kind of like... I saw somebody was playing a game, like uh, replaying a game on their Nintendo 64. And it made me think of my Nintendo 64. And it's just like, I have so many good memories associated with it. That it's just kind of like... It's just fun. It's fun to think back on it. I have such positive feelings about that moment. Playing that game, the the PlayStation 2, the Wii, and then other other gaming consoles, but those are those are like the the big 3, I think. But anyways, it's just like playing those games or remembering uh the time I spent playing them or on them or the certain struggles dealing with it, right? Like with the PlayStation 2, oh no, with the Nintendo 64, you had to blow on the cartridge and then put it in there and see if it worked. And it worked and you're just like, yes, that's a struggle. That's something I had to fight through. And then with the PS2, you kind of had to like wipe down the disc, the, 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 the game, the game CD or whatever. And then you had to like, get the rubbing alcohol, put it on a cotton ball, rub it around there, dry it, and then put it onto the, onto the, into the, um, into the disc cartridge of the PlayStation 2, slide it in there, and then wait, act like you're not paying attention, and then it works, and you're like, see, see, it worked, it happened, it happened, it worked. And then the Wii, thinking about Wii Sports and the music and playing uh, tennis and maybe throwing the Wii remote at the TV and all of that stuff is like, it all comes back to you and you're just like, it's positive, it's good. And it also, it's still fun today to play the Wii. It's still innovative, it's still creative and fun and good. It's a lot better than a lot of other gaming consoles that are just like the same old same old but that one was inventive and different and just the best but there was also the the games as well right like mario kart transcends time like i don't care how you know after i die mario kart is still going to be here it's still going to be around. It's still going to be improving or getting different or fun. It's still going to be like a high, fast-paced game. It's going to be dynamic and amazing. And because of that, you know, there's going to be new nostalgia attached to it. But replaying that game in, in different iterations just makes you think about like, man, this game is, it's a classic. It, it la- it'll last for forever. 
It'll keep on lasting forever. So things like that, those kinds of video games, replaying them and getting getting back into it. And like I said before, it also makes you appreciate them a little bit more, right? It's kind of like, man, the developers were really working their asses off for me, for this enjoyment, for me to play this game, for me to fight and do this and do that. And then looking at video games today, you're just kind of like, man, they're really upping their game and they they got to nail it and they got to do it better and better and better and see if it like if it works out. And then sometimes the future games aren't even as good as the old games, you know? Like everybody keeps on saying the that Uncharted 2, the the video game is the best one. So then like 3, 4, 5 is just like Man, you guys aren't hitting the mark like you used to. And the graphics are old on that on that Uncharted 2. You should have you should have progressed. It should have gotten better, but instead it just kind of feels like everybody kind of knows that like the story, the gameplay, the way that you walk around the world or enjoy the game is just like it hits, you know, it's better. And then also sports games, right? Like they come out with a new one every single year, but it's kind of like, what's the point? It's the same thing. You're just playing the same game, just a different, you know, different year. But I I remember playing Madden and that was a lot of fun. But to be honest, playing playing football on the video game as opposed to in real life is like, I like the real life a lot better. So all of this, I just kind of want to think about like today's repeat or obsession with nostalgia because doesn't it feel like we're stuck in it? Doesn't it feel like we're just like nobody's coming up with the original stuff anymore? Like instead of coming up with a new thing, they're just like, let's reboot it. Let's bring back the old cast. Let's get everybody back together again. And it's just kind of like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why don't we take those resources that you guys are spending on and let's create something new. Let's create something different and iconic. And they're just and the company heads are just kind of like, no, we're we're doing what we know people love and like. And the actresses or the actors, they're all still alive. So we can get the cast back together again and play this role, do this thing. And it's like, but none of the actors or like the new actors that they put in there or that that they try to like the young cast with the old cast. And it's just kind of like, but the young cast isn't really going to go anywhere or do anything, right? Like it just feels like it's just uh, another reboot and then nothing's ever going to come out of it for them. And... I feel that way with like, well, we were just talking about Toy Story, right? I feel like Toy Story 3 was the perfect ending, but then they come out with Toy Story 4 and it's just kind of like, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't particularly feel like the right way to end it. I feel like Toy Story 3 ended it beautifully, hopeful, but then they, they had to do something new with it that I was just kind of like, I didn't really need this progression or this kind of like thing but okay and maybe maybe the same thing for today's music everybody keeps on sampling old songs and then they get the the artist to come back and sing on it or clear it and they kind of like comes at a whole new thing but it's like that song was already popular without you now you're just like reusing it to like make yourself popular. I don't know. It just kind of feels like they're carrying you a bit. You know, it just, it feels like we're stuck in it a bit and we don't want to, to let go as opposed to, I guess maybe now where it's like, I can't say for certain that traditional media is like the way to go anymore. You know, cause like the kids, uh, I mean the, 
the TV stars that I grew up watching, like Selena Gomez and and the other one, and like and Ariana Grande, and maybe like a few others, right? Like we were attached to them, and then social media amplified them because we were stuck with them. We wanted to know who they were, and now. We're all kind of like, well, what happened to this actor? Oh, they're here now and they're doing this or they're doing that. Let's let's follow them and come back to them. And then they come back and maybe they do like a, a podcast together. They, they come back and they do stuff. And it just kind of makes you feel like, okay, but what's what's really new? Like they they play reruns of like Hannah Montana, but they don't have anything new like that. They they play reruns of Wiz- Wizards of Waverly Place, but what else? What's their new idea? What's their newest thing? And it feels like they don't really have it, you know. So it's like we're stuck in there. We're stuck in that nostalgia, you know. But does it make me enjoy today less? Yes and no. It just kind of makes me think about the possibilities if we didn't keep on revisiting reboots and like redoing stuff. But then it's also kind of like, it's fun. It's just fun to like redo or see it in a, do it in a different way or introduce a new cast or do things differently. And I feel this way, especially I guess with music, music is kind of like, okay, okay. Like I still have that old song that's still fire, but then they gave us a, a new thing with it, you know, they, they sampled it, then they, and they still made it good, so it's all good. But overall, it doesn't make me enjoy today any less, it just makes me wonder, like, what would, what if somebody came out with something completely new and original, you know, that's kind of the whole thing. But anyways, I hope you guys all like this episode, I'll talk to you guys all next time, thank you.